and welcome to another Loco Works Wednesday video from Double O Rail. In this video, we're going to be wrapping up our LNER Teak Coach project. Uh, it's a project I started about 10 months ago, and uh, the reason I started it was I got this fantastic uh, Hornby uh, P2 steam locomotive and TTS sound version um, for Christmas last year. And uh, that particular loco um, needed uh, the appropriate rolling stock, and unfortunately I just didn't have it. Um, and so the appropriate rolling stock is basically these Eleanor uh, T coaches. So I had an option, I could go and I could buy the uh, premium uh, Hornby Eleanor T coaches, but unfortunately they're pretty expensive. They run about 50 pounds and you need probably four or five of them to create a decent rake. So you're looking at another, you know, 200, 250 pounds. So that's really money I wanted to put into other locomotives or in other parts of the layout. So um, I decided I needed to come up with a, a better idea. So the only other alternative is the Eleanor um, Teak coaches from their railroad range. Now the railroad range has a terrible finish on it. It, it doesn't look realistic at all. It's a funny kind of beige color. Um, so it's just, just plain hideous basically. However, um, there's a guy who has a very good mall railway channel called the Zima and uh, he basically uh, came up with this technique for painting the Eleanor uh, coaches in the railroad range and uh, David Howarth um, who has another fantastic channel um, he kind of duplicated um, this particular technique and that's where I saw it first and then I went back and, and watched uh, the Zima's uh, channel as well and I figured I'd have a go at it. And so about 10 months ago, I uploaded a video kind of showing you a couple of examples and, and how it was getting along. And since then, I've basically been just trying to acquire additional coaches and working on it on and off um, for the past couple of months. So I haven't put a ton of time into it. I've probably sat down and maybe spent an hour or two um, painting about five or six coaches. Um, but the good news is I now have um, probably about five or six rakes of these uh, coaches, so I can use them for all of the uh, passenger LNER trains that I have, which is fantastic. Um, so what I wanted to do today was basically not only show you the end result, but kind of show you how we got there. So um, what I'm going to do uh, first is I'm going to basically uh, let you see this thing run around the layout and uh, the TTS sound, and then we'll go back to the uh, workbench and I'll show you exactly how we put this together. Now, one thing to keep in mind before I get started is if you go and you look at photos, uh, whether they're all black and white photos um, or they're, they're color photos of these coaches and running on uh, preserved railways, uh, one thing that you'll notice is that the um, canvas uh, style roofing that these coaches have um, wouldn't stay clean for very long and it would have uh, various different levels of, of dirt on it. Um, the second thing is that uh, none of the panels are ever really the same. So if you ever look in at um, these LNER T coaches, they have uh, different uh, shades and grains of wood on, on almost every panel. So you could be looking at the same coach and you would see different shades of different coloring. And they have also varied um, uh, just from, from one coach to another. So it's quite common to have, you know, uh, one coach maybe very, very dark, uh, one that might be a little bit newer, might be a little brighter, and if one's been recently, uh, you know, maintained or polished, it, it would have a kind of more of a shinier glow to it. And um, so I wanted to try to recreate the same thing. So almost every single one of these coaches that you're going to see has some form of different weathering. It has paint to a different level, and I used three different kinds of uh, paint bashes. Um, so. If you go and you look, and I'll put in the cards for this video, the links to the other two videos that I did. Um, the bulk of the coaches that you'll see in this video use a different technique uh, in terms of mixing the paint. So I'll explain that back at the workbench, um, but I just wanted to explain that uh, right now so you had an idea as to why each of the coaches looked a little bit different uh, as you see it go around the layout. Okay, so let's get this thing running first, and then uh, we'll go back to the workbench.
so we're back over at the workbench. Uh, one of the things that you will notice is we've put this back scene in to the uh, LocoWorks uh, workbench here. And this is something I'll explain in a upcoming uh, layout update video. Um, but basically I uh, painted the, the back here of the plywood boards with um, primer paint. And then I basically just uh, stuck the ID back scene to it. It was a spare one that we had left over from doing the main part of the layout. Didn't really have a use for it, and I figured I'd uh, stick it in here and make it look nice. Um, you can see here I've done some ballasting a little bit on one of the tracks and did some scenic behind it as well. So um, we will show you that in an upcoming layout video. Um, one other thing, I know I promised people that we would do the uh, dual APT uh, power cars. So you can see there that one's one is already completed. Uh, there's another one that's still kind of uh, in progress. So uh, next Local Works Wednesday, we should be uh, doing that unless something strange pops up. So let's get back to these LNART coaches. Uh, you can see the ones on the back here are basically the ones that were running on the layout. Um, you can see I've got various different weathering patterns uh, along the uh, roofs there. Uh, if you look at any kind of photos, the roofs were made of canvas and uh, that canvas would pick up uh, dirt in various different patterns. It would take a little while for it to get dirty, so you'd have a mix of some that were completely soot black, um, some were kind of grey, some had a mixture of colours. Um, so what I've done is I've basically tried, as you can see here, uh, to get a kind of a mix of all the different kinds. Um, you can see here, this is what the roof looks like um, originally. Uh, now these were all the cheap Hornby uh, 1980s versions. So um, all of these coaches, I picked up most of them for just a couple of pounds each. Um, so some of these roofs were uh, white like this one is. Some were more of a cream color. Uh, some were just discolored from sunlight. Um, there was one that I had to paint white because it just uh, didn't look right. Uh, some of the older ones will have black um, ends to them so the whole end will be black. You'll just have to paint the sides brown. I, this is actually one that I think was black, so uh, you can see there it doesn't uh, turn out too badly at all. Alright, so I used uh, three different batches of paints. Uh, the first batch of paint was mainly a mix of uh, primarily varnish, and it was an old varnish that I had uh, sitting out in the garage. Uh, it worked really, really well. Uh, it had a really lengthy drying time. I think it took four to five days for it to dry, so it wasn't ideal and it, the fumes from it were not great, so it wasn't ideal for using inside. Um, the second batch of paint, I used a mix of acrylic paints, which are uh, these sort of uh, water-based paints, um, and I watered down the varnish like I did with the first batch, um, but instead of using the, the old, you know, 15, 10, 15 year old varnish that had been sitting in the garage, um, I used a, a new um, tin of uh, varnish that I from Minwax, and uh, it, it worked pretty well. In fact, it's what kind of produced uh, this coach back here. Um, so it's a really, really nice finish. Um, however, it too had really lengthy drying time, and the paint mixtures were hit and miss. Um, I think I had to mix it up three or four different times, adjust the water and adjust the, the paint level. Um, to actually get it to uh, to not only look right, but to actually mix with the acrylic paints. Cause, so keep in mind, the acrylic paints are water-based, the min wax was oil-based, and obviously oil and water don't mix very well. So it, it took quite a lot of mixing to get that paint together. Um, so ultimately what I did on the uh, final batch was that I, um, I used uh, just the paints. So one thing I did notice when I didn't use the varnish, um, I didn't quite get that shine, that kind of uh, wooden look, um, but the color was correct. So I didn't need to weather the sides at all, I only had to weather the roof. Um, but you can see here, uh, this is one that was done with the uh, varnish, and this was also done with the varnish, and you can see uh, the weathering powder kind of took that kind of super glossy look off of it, and, and made it look pretty decent. So, um, how did we do this? So first of all, if you go look at the original two videos, you'll see how we dismantled the coaches. And the coaches are very easy to dismantle. Um, basically, there's uh, two clips, uh, one set here and one set here. And all you have to do is uh, flip 
the uh, chassis over and you can see there is basically a hole right there and you just use a small screwdriver to squeeze the clips in pop it off on one side, turn it around squeeze on the other side, wiggle it a little bit and it comes apart um, there is a plastic section that looks a bit like this uh, there's four plastic clips in the center all you do is just squeeze uh, the center clips and it pops right out and usually when it pops out it has uh, a pretty solid weight that will fall out and then you'll also have the plastic interior so this is the plastic interior of the brake coach and you can see there it has basically seats and dividers and uh, flooring and um, what I did was basically painted it uh, with some enamel paints um, I used uh, gloss brown for uh, the interior here as well as the floor the reason I used gloss paints was I thought that these would be kind of better kept on the interior so if it was varnished wood it would look a little bit shiny and so you kind of get that effect with the uh, enamel gloss paint and then what I did was on the inside after looking at a ton of different photos and looking at how it looked from the uh, windows and so on um, you can't really make out a lot of the detail on the inside um, when you start running the look or even if you light it up internally um, you still really don't see a ton of the detail so what I did was I basically painted the floor which would have been the same kind of material as the upholstery on the seats and um, I basically there are some little hand armrests there and um, these probably could have been painted brown but yeah, I didn't bother doing that uh, since you couldn't really tell the detail and then obviously I painted the insides um, up here brown and so on so um, if you are going to add lighting uh, these coaches will always gas lit uh, I believe uh, in the uh, LNER period so you'll be looking at a very dim yellow kind of color not a very bright white LED color so um, any kind of interior would be dimly lit um, not that really bright intense white LEDs that you see on some coach lighting so in that case um, the detailing on the interior doesn't be, need to be too bad um, what I did do is I did use um, four different colors for doing the interiors I used this sort of um, blue uh, royal dark blue color um, for one set I used uh, what's called British Crimson which was kind of a maroon color um, I used this kind of leathery brown color um, that's acrylic and I also used a sort of a slightly brighter red color so uh, by using different colors I could variety, you know, do a bit of variety on the interiors as well um, I do have uh, people on order so when those show up from eBay I'll be able to uh, glue them into the coaches as well and I'm not going to glue people into all the coaches uh, I'll probably have one rake uh, where I've got people uh, in them so um, like I said paint the interior is very very easy you just take this and you can set the original color and uh, that's basically all you need to do there so um, on the actual bogies and uh, chassis uh, you do need to paint the side brown so there's a little kind of uh, beam that runs across here as well as this kind of uh, step ledge that's here so what you do is you, you paint the ledge uh, brown on both sides and that's really the only kind of detailing that you are missing from this part of the uh, the, the coach um, you also need to replace the wheels so if you see here um, these have got plastic wheel sets and uh, what I use to replace them are uh, or uh, 8097 which are 12.6 millimeter uh, metal three hole disc uh, coach wheels and so you can see here um, they are basically metal and they have the, uh, the three holes in them and uh, they work pretty well and these also improve the uh, running of the coach now you get a pack of these um, well in this case we got them for 15 Canadian dollars uh, I believe they run about five pounds on hands uh, in the UK and you get ten so uh, four packs of this uh, did uh, ten coaches which uh, isn't too bad at all so for twenty pounds you can do uh, about ten coaches so um, to remove those they're just like the uh, Mach 4 that we did last week so you can check that video out but basically um, you pull back 
the uh, bogey. So if you're looking at the side here, you just basically push back on that and pull the wheel out and do the same thing on the other side and it comes right out. Um, reassembling is very, very simple. Uh, you take the, the coach like this. Um, the nice thing with these is these are actually keyed. If you look on the underside, there's uh, one, two, three, four uh, bits of square plastic. Uh, they will only fit one way, so if you put it in the wrong way, it'll remain kind of raised up and it won't be flat. Uh, if you put it in the right way, um, it should end up being completely flat like that. So it's very, very easy to reassemble it. And you put this in, obviously you have to weight in, put that in, the plastic piece over the top, and then the um, body shell, and it all clips together. And you basically just have to make sure it lines up with the uh, clip ends, and it just clips in. Um, in terms of uh, finish, like I said, uh, this is how uh, a lot of them turned out. Uh, went for a slightly darker look on some of them, and a uh, slightly less darker look on the others. Uh, if you look at a lot of the period photos, I remember I'll be running these sort of in an LNR period uh, rather than a preserved period, so um, they would have been a little dirtier um, while they were kind of in service. And so they turned out very, very nicely. Um, so, cost wise, how much did all of this cost? Well, if you factor in each coach. Um, actually, we'll do, we'll do it in, 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 in a, a set of five or, or a set of ten. Let's do it in a set of ten. So, each coach cost me about three pounds each. So, ten coaches cost me 30 pounds. Um, the whole project, I only used a fraction of the paint. So, um, we'll not worry about that. We'll, we'll just say the paint was on hand. Um, the wheel sets cost me 20 pounds to cover 10 um, coaches. So you're looking at 50 pounds for 10 coaches. If I was to buy the premium um, Hornby ones, one coach would have cost me 50 pounds. So this project I was able to get 10 times the coaches for the same price, um, which I always see as a, a fantastic uh, kind of cost savings. So even if you factor in the cost of the paint, um, these paints cost me three dollars each. So you got like twelve dollars. So not even not even eight or nine pounds. Even if you throw in the, the cost of the disposable paint brushes, you know you, you're still nowhere near maybe sixty pounds yeah, to do ten coaches. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a fantastic little project. Um, it doesn't really take a whole lot, it's nothing that you can uh, really mess up and uh, the end result as you saw from the video is uh, fantastic. Alright, so that's basically it for this video. So we'll leave you with a few more shots of the uh, coaches and I'll do some close-ups here on the uh, workbench as well so you can take a look. But you can see here I've got, um, along with these uh, four here, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, in this batch. So, and I have another um, about 12 or, or 13 or so um, that I've done as well. Um, now, I do have a box with another 10 or so of these coaches in them. Um, I, I did get quite a few uh, good deals. Um, so, I will probably over the Christmas period do more of these as I am getting more Eleanor uh, locos in next year. So um, this gives me quite a nice little uh, setup for, for running an LNER Euro running session. So uh, I'm quite pleased with that. But uh, all in all, it's a really cool project. And uh, like I said, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, checking it out and uh, hopefully give you some ideas and maybe save you some money. All right, so uh, let's take a couple of close-up shots of the... Uh, all right, so uh, here you can see the uh, final product. And you can see there we've got the metal wheels, uh, the edges uh, here painted that brown color, uh, slightly weathered roofing, and this has got the kind of uh, glossy uh, finish with the varnish. Um, like I said, we had uh, a couple of different uh, paint formulas. So the first paint formula I used um, basically was uh, straight varnish. It was old uh, wood stain uh, that we had in the garage. Um, it, it was a little watery and it was watered down further and it was also mixed with a little bit of uh, kind of a dark red crimson paint and that was applied to a couple of the um, the, the teak coaches, probably like four or five of them 
and uh, it worked out pretty well. Uh, I was quite happy with it. And uh, this one you're looking at is actually one of those, I think. And um, the only problem with it was it, it did take quite a while to dry. So um, you will notice that it, it will take quite a while to dry. And the second batch of paint, um, we used uh, Minwax varnish, again with uh, some red and some yellow and some brown acrylic paint. Uh, it was heavily mixed, uh, it took quite a while to mix the acrylic paint with the oil-based uh, uh, Minwax, and, and mainly that's because oil and water just don't mix, so you, it takes a little bit of extra effort to mix it together. It dried a little bit faster. Um, it wasn't quite as transparent as the uh, original watered down uh, version, but I think I probably could have watered it down further to to fix that problem. Um, but ultimately, um, the and, and you get quite a nice look. So if you see here, this is the sort of finish that you get um, with the uh, with the varnish. And then if I put this in the front here, uh, this is the sort of finish you get. Um, without the varnish. So they're very, very, very similar. There's just, it, it's more of a flat color. And uh, well, that's more of a kind of a glossy. So if I can put this on top of the other coach, you can get an idea of the difference. It, it's very, very slight, but you can see there, it's slightly a little bit brighter one on the bottom and a little shinier. And, and that's basically the only difference um, between using the varnish. And obviously the downside to using the varnish is it takes about a week to dry. Um, so the paint mixture that I used, I, I used this uh, leather uh, paint color and uh, it worked pretty well. It's kind of a very light brown. It's a little too light uh, to use by itself. If you use the darker brown, you probably don't need to use black. Um, however, I used this uh, Model Masters acrylic black color mixed in. Um, I probably used about 60% brown, 20% black. And then the rest of it was equal parts. Um, this kind of really bright insignia yellow, and uh, this uh, bright red uh, kind of color. So these are about 10% in the mix each. And uh, this was about, uh, like I said, about 20%. And then the brown made up the 60%. Uh, really, um, I was kind of compensating. So if I put too much black in. I threw some extra yellow in and some extra red in, and it ultimately uh, produced a very nice finish, as you can see there. Um, so yeah, so it, it's it's a pretty cool project, and uh, I kind of really like the results. So if I kind of scooch this down a little bit and move the camera this way, uh, you can see uh, this is a slightly darker version. Now this is one of the ones that I varnished. And um, it was just too shiny, and there was little stains uh, where the varnish didn't adhere to the plastic properly. Um, so what I did was I, I used weathering powders to sort of mask it back up, and you can see uh, that worked reasonably well. Um, it just kind of looks like it's uh, slightly older, uh, kind of more weathered uh, version of the coach. And if you do look at the uh, pre even the preserved um, LNER T coaches, uh, if you see photos of them, you'll see. Some of them are a lot darker um, if it's been a while since they've been varnished. So it, it, I think having a, a range of colors makes it look very interesting. And uh, like I said, I have dozens of these coaches now. So um, it's, it's definitely uh, well worth the effort. And it doesn't take very long, especially um, if you do them uh, all together. So I think the longest thing was to paint the interior. Uh, and this probably took about... 20 minutes to, to do this. Um, it only takes about five minutes to paint and replace the wheels on the uh, under frame and uh, it takes probably eh, I'd say nearly 30 minutes to, to paint uh, the, the body shell for the coach and it only took about five or six minutes to, to weather it so it's you know reasonably uh, okay kind of uh, time frame for a project and you know you can do it while you watch television or something like that um all right so i think that's it really for for this video i've probably uh waffled on long enough so hopefully you enjoyed this uh look at works wednesday video if you haven't seen the previous uh two parts of the elney or teak project um i i've put the links in, in the cards on this video so just click on the i and it will uh pop up those cards for you and you can uh, go ahead and check those videos out. Um, 
So that's it for this video. So hope you enjoyed it. And until next time.